You're welcome back. Uh, it's still the run-up, and today we're discussing two issues. First of all, we'll be talking about uh, what happened in uh, the courts where the Senate president has been made the uh, central candidate for his senatorial district instead of the person that we knew, Machina, that we knew. And we're also going to be talking about the biting conditions Nigerians are facing uh, in the case of uh, Naira scarcity. But for the first issue that we're discussing, we're joined by uh, Barrister Evans Ufeli, who is a constitutional lawyer. Good morning and welcome to the program, Barrister Ufeli. Good morning and thank you. Okay, well, like I said, some people will be rejoicing, some people will be sad, but for most of us, we're just confused what really happened. Um, what would you say about the judgment? Right now, it's out of the court, so you can speak freely about it, I'm sure. What do you make of the judgment that has brought in Ahmed Lawan instead of Mashina? Well, I, I don't agree with uh, the judgment of the Supreme Court. Uh, except that uh, you cannot go higher than the Supreme Court. Uh, it is very clear in our laws uh, that um, every pre-election matter must be commenced by originating summons. And that is captured by the practice direction of the Federal High Court 2022. I am doing a couple of election petitions too, so I should know. And I know that even when we I file matters uh, for election matters in the court. There were instances where the court asked those who came by originating summons to one, who came by a writ of summons to one, from back to originating summons. Now, the Supreme Court, the major reason it gave is that because Machina alleged uh, crime, fraud, that it ought not to have commenced the proceedings by uh, originating summons. Now, it's supposed to con uh, commence the proceedings mm -hmm. by writ of someone, in which case he will call witnesses to validate the, the claim that um, there was a criminal infraction in the process uh, of, of, of the uh, election and all that. And it was on that reason, because if you come by originating someone, what the court will do is to look at documentary evidence. You attach all documents. And that is the way the Federal High Court have already established by its practice direction. And that is how you should commence proceedings. Now, the lawyers to Machina commence their proceedings by originating summons. But here the Supreme Court saying that because they alleged criminality and fraud, they ought to have come by writ of summons to enable them call witness, you know, so that they can be cross-examined and all that. Uh, if you look at the whole thing, I mean, the election that was, uh, uh, the primaries that was conducted on the 28th of May, okay, 2022, um, the current president, Ahmed Lawan, was not, did not contest that election. He withdrew from it and went further to contest the June 6th uh, presidential election, okay? So, and that election of the 28th of May is the one that was validated by the trial court, okay? That, that Ahmed, uh, did not contest that election. So he ought not to have clinched and then become the uh, candidate just just because uh, the process of commencement was uh, originating someone and not reach of someone. I mean, uh, our laws are very clear. If you look at uh, even the Electoral Act, okay, it clearly defines who a candidate is and who an aspirant is. Okay, but when you did not participate in primaries, you should not emerge as a candidate, because the condition precedent, okay, for emerging as a candidate of a party should not be by judicial pronouncement and judicial validation. Mm -hmm. It should be by participating in the primaries of the party first, okay? In this case, here is a man who did not participate in the primaries, and now the, the, the judiciary is now overriding the uh, Electoral Act to validate his candidacy and then make him the candidate of his senatorial district. It's quite, it's quite unfortunate. It's an unfortunate scenario. I mean, 
Uh, for me, it didn't, it didn't come to me like any confusion. It came to, it came to me like gross manifestation of injustice. Mm. And uh, we should desist from it because when judgment like this are, are pronounced, it becomes precedent for subsequent judgment, especially when the judgment is coming from the Supreme Court. Mm. Uh, subsequently, lawyers are going to go to court in subsequent elections, canvass this position, and hold the Supreme Court hostage to this decision. And then the Supreme Court will have to keep validating this decision until it overrides itself. I mean, the, that is why if you look at the uh, minority judgment, so the two justices who detour, who took a different uh, side to the issue, they clearly state that uh, Ahmed Lawa didn't contest the election. So if you do not contest the election, how do you now become... The judgment came like, to me like taking a poisonous leap to a purification feast. I mean, we must learn to kill the mosquito that buys the slave. Because we have no guarantee that if he sees the bottom of the king, it will not do the same. Justice must be premised on merit. Justice must uh, be that which is seen as manifestly done. The, the era of technicality and the era of um, using commencement proceedings, legal technicalities, is gone. The era of judicial rascality is gone. So, and the Supreme Court, in its judgment, to have said so, that technicality should not become the basis upon which judgment should be delivered. But this particular judgment appears to me like the Supreme Court is taking uh, itself away from that era. A, a man that did not contest, who even accepted his fate after the court of first instance, the court, had said he cannot, okay, emerge as a candidate of the party by virtue of the fact that he did not contest the primary selection. So why, what is the essence of section 29 of the Electoral Act? It said that for you to become a candidate of a party, you must submit, you must first contest the primaries of that. Uh, and it's not even enough to contest the primaries. The primaries must be monitored by INEC. It must be validated by the relevant authority and the requisite bodies before it can become uh, a valid primary upon which you can have a candidacy for here. It appears, uh, for me, we have uh, taken a different course to what the law is talking about. Uh, left for you, what should have been the judgment in this case? Yeah, for me, the judgment should have been that um, since um, a man did not contest the primaries, he should not become a candidate or a flag bearer of the party in that constituency. The person who contested the primaries and emerged the winner should because Ahmed Lawa, his eye was in the presidency and then he went to contest that primaries. All of a sudden, he lost it and turned around. That primary was, was on the 6th of June and on the 7th of June, 2022, he turned around that they, they, they conducted another primaries where he now emerged. Whereas the one of the 28th of May, 2022, was not cancelled by the party. That one, that one, Machina emerged and still subsists. Ahmed Lawa went to con, 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 uh, contest the, the, the primaries for the presidential seat on the 6th of June, lost, came back on the 7th, they organized the primaries where he now emerged, where I should have a subsisting uh, uh, a candidate who had already emerged for, for the one before now. So for me, for me, uh, this is injustice. The, the, the Supreme Court ought to have uh, uh, made the pronouncement that Machina uh, become the candidate. Or at worst, or at worst, the Supreme Court ought to have ordered for a rerun. If, 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 they, must, if they must do justice. Well, would a, would a rerun have, been, uh, have still been legal? Uh, according to electoral laws and every other law guiding this kind of uh, process, would a rerun at this time uh, still have been legal? Uh, there was a rerun last week <laughs> in Abia State. The uh, candidates uh, for the PDP who died. died. Mm. Uh, yes, and there was a rerun. There's a replacement now. Okay. okay? So I'm just saying that uh, if the Supreme Court wants to really do that, the worst they could have done is to order for a rerun and not to turn it around for a party who did not contest the primaries at all to then become the candidate in that constitution. I mean, 
people, the, the people voted for Machina in that constituency. These persons, okay, were representing the larger society. They are delegates representing the larger um, uh, uh, states, okay? And have, they have given their, their mandate to that effect. All of a sudden, someone who did not contest the election will now have to take the mandate from the person who contested the election. You okay, well. Barrister, it's, it's just... It's just confusing. Um, now that they say, the Supreme Court has said that it is Lawan that is the uh, candidate for that senatorial district. So Machina has lost out. The people who, like you said, voted for him have lost out. Is there something else that they can do to hold the party and hold uh, the instrument that brought uh, 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 Lawan to that position, you know, can they can they still do something else to hold them? They cannot. They cannot do anything. They cannot do anything because the Supreme Court is the final arbiter. So, if a Supreme Court I'm, makes I'm, a mistake, for instance, it just stands and yes. sets a precedent for the rest of the for rest of us to come and maybe suffer it. Well, if the Supreme Court make a mistake, the only point where you can call for a review is when there's a clerical error, typographical error, or there is issues within that they are forced within typo and all that okay that's when the supreme court you can go back to the supreme court and ask for a review but you cannot go back to the supreme court to ask the supreme court to upon itself the supreme court have used judgments to upon itself on its own violation not at the instance of any party or persons or group of persons uh telling the supreme court to upon its own judgment you see you see that you see that you 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 will see it was a, a, a three two, okay three two in the sense that three of the justices um, uh, uh, gave judgment in favor of Ahmed, or two dissented, and if you read the 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 uh, provisions of the law that were cited by the two dissenting judges, and you marry to the letter acts and the fact of this case, you will find the logic therein, okay. But here we are faced with a condition where you cannot take the Supreme Court to any other court. You, the only place you can go from the Supreme Court is heaven. Okay? And that is a process. And we're saying that um, this kind of judgment indicts the judiciary. And for me, I, I don't think um, it's, it's in good light, in my own estimation, from what... They, because, I mean, the reason given is so, just just so that the, the Supreme Court didn't even uh, look at uh, the practice direction that was issued by the Federal High Court. Uh, I had similar case in Asaba, um, a pre-election matter, where I was in court in a particular day where the court asked all the councils who have uh, uh, commenced their proceedings uh, by uh, writ of someone to go and convert to originating someone. Okay? But here, the Supreme Court is uh, even, even they, 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 they have the fact that because of the, the, the alleged criminality and fraud, and that is just the reason. Okay, how about the merit of the case itself? Okay, let's put aside the issue of fraud that was alleged. Okay, if a man had not contested the primaries uh, and he had uh, the, uh, the other party had raised fraud in the process, is the issue of fraud more important than the condition precedent, which is that Section 29 of the Electoral Act says you must contest? You see, it, this is, is this is the fear. This is the fear, Barista, because Electoral Act that was amended in 2022 is what gives the people so much confidence that uh, the elections of 2023 will be better, the political climate will be better, and all that. But this one setting a precedence does it mean it has just rubbished the electoral act because if this is not respected what is the likelihood that any other thing in the electoral act will be respected i mean we've seen cases in aquabom where aquabio became uh, suddenly became the uh, candidate for his senatorial district which people feel shouldn't have been we saw the one before the Electoral Act, it can be excused, where a governor in Imo State came fourth or so, and then 
after all that happened in the courts, he became the governor. And he's still the governor till today. We don't seem to understand what is going on. So does it mean in the Electoral Act is just something that we cannot even look to because they, they, the provisions of that act may be flouted by anybody, anytime, because of any reason? Well, uh, the, the, the truth is that the election has to remain the extant law on elections, election matter. The constitution remains the ground norm, okay? Uh, the reason we advocate that the, the court upholds the provisions of the electoral act and the constitution is it is only in doing that that we can find the reflection of the people's hope and aspiration in the candidacy of politicians, okay? Now, but where there's distraction or detractors or where you have judgment like this, it makes rubbish of the said law. Uh, people have argued about who is an aspirant and who is a candidate, okay? When do you become a candidate and when are you an aspirant? You are an aspirant before primaries. When you emerge the winner, you become a candidate, okay? Those are established issues, issues of law in the Electoral Act, okay, which is very, very clear. Okay, uh, interpretations should come in that light. Okay, but well, here we are saying that the fact that a man alleged fraud is not a reason you should jettison the merit of the, his case and then focus on the technicality of the mode of commencement. Okay, uh, uh, if if you think that the mode of commencement was wrong, you should have ordered that the case be relitigated or start de novo. I know that time is of, of, of essence now, but uh, the Supreme Court should, could have done that because um, for because a man did not commence in a particular way, is that enough reason why he, he should lose um, his mandate given to him by his people? I mean... The, the, for, the, the for, thing is, the thing is, uh, the thing is, if let's say the electoral acts were like the Ten Commandments and the fact that you cannot become a candidate in an election that, or, that you never contested uh, has been struck out as it were. We, that means we have just nine commandments as it is now. Because any time this thing comes up, this judgment that has been given will be set as a precedent, will be set as an example. This is what has happened, which means the electoral act and its effect is reducing so can we still have hope in these electoral acts, granted that even before the election, we have seen instances where it has been set aside and something which is opposite what is the provision in the electoral act is being done. What hope do the Nigerian people have in both the electoral act and the electoral process itself? Hope is not all lost. Uh, hope is not all lost. Um, in, in the case uh, at hand, uh, for me, I feel it is a, a patent error, um, which uh, the Supreme Court must in subsequent judgment correct. Why we live with the pains of what has already been established, um, we should not go back there. Um, uh, uh, you know, what Lord Denning would say that we must try as much as possible to keep the stream of justice clean at all times. Uh, if we pollute the stream of justice, well, we're, going to, we're going to have the adverse effects and it, its consequences in society. I mean, people will begin to lose hope in the institutions of government. And, and the worst thing that can happen to a country is where people now lose hope completely in every area. Judiciary is the a, is a, is a hope of the common man. If everything has gone wrong, the judicial system must not go wrong. But that is a system that is meant to correct every other processes. And let me say this, that if not for the judiciary, even as, as much as we talk about its uh, inefficiency right now in the, in the press of this judgment and all that, uh, if not for the judiciary, the, the, this Nigeria would have long been destroyed by politicians. I can tell you that it is politicians that are dragging the judiciary ruthlessly this way. Politicians will come up with all kind of gimmicks. You want to contest the, the, the pre presidential uh, 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 primaries. And at the same time, you want to retain your seats. 
as uh, uh, in the in the, in the Senate, and then you pulled out from the from the uh, state uh, uh, primaries to conduct a uh, contest at, at, at the at the at the center, then lost there, came back. Primaries has already been concluded yet. The next day, you now have to conduct your own primaries. And the other one has not even been validated. What are we doing? Does this confirm what people have been thinking, that the judiciary has been compromised? The judiciary has been bought over. At least a chunk of the people involved have been bought over. And uh, it may be a, a problem for Nigerians. Is this not an evidence to that effect? Or what would be except, your reaction? Except, except that we don't have material evidence to that effect. <laughs> I know you would say that. Uh, but, but it is deductive. It is um, you. If it, whoever imply that concept, I will not blame the person because it is this kind of thought is stemming out from what is seen. What is it? In as much as I will not yield totally to, the, to that fact because of the want of material evidence, over those who have chosen to think and act that way, I will not blame them. I will not blame them in the sense that if the judiciary had avoided what has just happened, nobody would think of you that way. Okay, there should be equality before the law. The fact that somebody is a, a, a Senate president does not mean that uh, at every point he should be made to, to get away with illegalities. We should come to that point where the judiciary will sit down and pronounce, okay, uh, an incumbent president wrong and take him down out of office. We should get to that level. That is the only, that is the only point where we begin to build confidence in our democracy and in our development. I choose to speak the truth, irrespective of who is who delivered the judgment. Irrespective of, I don't care about that. What I care about is the laws that I have read, its provision, except, except the court want to struck out section 29 of the Electoral Act. If that is struck out, it will therefore mean that anybody who did not contest primaries can come from anywhere at any time. Mm and emerge as a candidate. Mm. So, okay. and that will not be what um, a civilized country should put up with. So, and international communities are watching all over the world. People are looking at how we are conducting ourselves, how we talk about developing Nigeria, and we concoct a political system that, that does not give truth to reason, and that does not do what is appropriate. It is quite unfortunate, I must say. Okay, uh, well, when the politicians do wrong, we run to the courts, we run to other places, we do so many things. But when the courts go wrong, we hardly ever say anything. And sometimes, like they say, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So if the courts are allowed to do the things that are wrong as well, or are very shady, uh, confusing to the people who may not be learned gentlemen, uh, what do we as people do to make sure that the courts themselves sit up? Because, for instance, they had, we had NSAS because the security people were doing what was not right. We had Occupy Nigeria when the politicians were perceived to be doing the wrong thing. We've had so many things like that for every sector of our society. But I can hardly remember any time we've done anything because the courts have gone wrong. Now, I don't, I'm not talking about a, a, a revolution or a, some kind of thing, but what do we need to do to show the courts that we are also watching and we need them to do the right thing because they're the last hope of the common man, as we always say. What can we do to have these checks and balances with the courts? Well, it is up to the people to stomach or jettison or um, protest against illegality. Illegality to one is illegality to all. Okay. Uh, hardly will you find people demonstrating peacefully in the streets of Nigeria as a result of um, 
a pronouncement that is perceived illegal or that is uh, uh, preoccupied with uh, what is not right. Okay, hardly will you see that. But it is up to the people to, to decide whether or not um, it is proper to, to leave and stay by this kind of pronouncement. Um, the ultimate issue about the legal system the, and the provisions of our laws is to enhance society, re engineer the process, so that at the end of the day, justice is seen to be manifestly done. But where we now have injustice or perceived wrong, Okay, uh, Barrister Evans Ophelia, uh, I think we've lost the audio there, but I um, uh, would like to thank you, even though you, maybe you can still hear us. We'd like to thank you for coming on the show. Okay, you're still there. Well, we've run out of time anyway, but um, we're glad that we had this perspective from you and so many people in the camp of the people, person who won will be glad, uh, glad by now, will be happy, but... Uh, a lot of Nigerians like us are very confused. And now that you have told us uh, some of the things that uh, we needed to hear, we know what happened there and what we'll be looking forward to in the future. Well, but like you said, all hope is not lost. Thank you so much for being a part of this show today. You're welcome. Okay, we've been talking with uh, Barrister Ivan Ufeli Esquire, a constitutional lawyer. And when we return from the break that we're about to take, we'll be looking at the Naira redesign and still taking uh, some uh, views from the people of Nigeria. We'll be talking with uh, Mr. Theophilus Akatuba on uh, the twists and turns of the Naira redesign and how he feels about it. Stay with us. <laughs>